Welcome to another edition of Highliner News. I'm Gabe. And I'm Teddy. Every person has six lookalikes in the world. Reporter Amelia Meester checks out the halls of VCHS to see how many students have celebrity matches. Koi, who do you think your celebrity lookalike is? Uh, just for what if people have told me, I'll say Brad Pitt. Holy, <laughs> is that me? Apparently. Who's your celebrity look like? Uh, Ed Sheeran. Who's your celebrity look like? A uh, few people say I look like Eleven sorry, from 11. Stranger Things. Who's your celebrity look like? My twin sister. <laughs> Curtis. 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 Did I just get like? Do you have any celebrity look likes? Um. Some people kind of say I look like Willie Nelson. Do you have any celebrity lookalikes? Um, well, I've been told Sadie Sink looks like me, or I look like her. Do you have any celebrity lookalikes? I have no clue. I mean, Miss Elliot says you look like Santa Claus. Well, in November, I grow it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's accurate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you look like Jim Carrey? Seriously. Possibly Jim Carrey. Thank you, Gavin. Yeah. Do you have a celebrity lookalike? Uh, yes. Okay, who? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Greyball. Good answer. Yeah. I can see it. So, <laughs> me too. Uh -huh. By the transitive property, you look like Brad Pitt. Yes. <laughs> I actually am Brad Pitt's secret twin. Wow. wow. For Highliner News, this is Amelia Meester. Pickleball is a sport that is gaining popularity throughout Valley City. It is a hybrid between badminton, ping pong, and tennis. Reporter Carter Jewett brings you the story. I started that here in Valley City. We, we play Wednesday nights in the South Gym um, because none of the students are using the gym at that time. And um, I really enjoy pickleball and so I just wanted to keep playing and so I found some different friends that are willing to play with me. and. Um, and it, it got pretty popular. It's now an invitation-only um, situation on Wednesday nights, and um, since there's only room for two courts, I uh, brought my own, bought my own nets and brought them from home and um, found a lot of people that like to play, and it, it's very competitive, and it's, it's really fun. I started doing it here in Valley City when I moved here uh, five years ago, but I started playing pickleball about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I had a... Um, friend that went to Florida over Christmas to visit her grandparents and when she came back she said I learned this new thing called pickleball and we need to do it so I bought a net and she bought paddles and balls and we set it up in a gym and we started playing and then invited a few people to join us and um, so we kind of grew it in Hanford when I lived there and then uh, when I moved here I just brought some of the nets with me and some of the paddles and, and we started playing. And then the rec center has pickleball on Monday nights. And so I went to that and um, got to know some of the people that, uh, that played and that's been growing and growing. And so now on Monday nights at the rec center, we're up to, I think, around 25 people that are part of that process too. With the two courts, then um, after the first game, then the winners will take on each other and whoever lost, they'll take on each other and switch teams sometimes. and. But, um, you know, we're, we're all pretty equal, so it, it doesn't matter. It's always a good game, no matter who your partner is and no matter, you know, who you're playing against. It's, it's a lot of fun. For Highlander News, this is Carter Jewett. Reporter Karina Olson heads to the elementary schools to check out the latest jokes. Why did the chicken cross the park? That's why. To get to the yellow slide. What's a dragon's favorite snack? Firecrackers. Why did the cookie go to the doctor? Because he was feeling crummy. What do you what do you call a dentist that cleans werewolf teeth? Crazy. What's a scarecrow's favorite fruit? What? A strawberry. What does a triceratops sit on? It's triceratops bottom. What is a snowman's favorite treat? An icicle. Why did Rudolph have a bad grade on his report card? Because he went down in history. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? To get to the idiot's house. Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. Why didn't the ske skeleton go to the dance? Because he had no body to go with. Who says, oh, 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 walking backwards? 
Santa Claus. Cause ho ho ho, oh oh oh. What does the pencil say to the pencil? You're looking sharp. Yo, daddy's so cool that he has sunglasses. <laughs> Why did the mommy go to the doctor? Why? Cause he was coughing. Where were you when the lights went out? In the dark. I like turtles. I did a chicken cross the road. Why? To get to the other side. Reporting for Highlander News, this is Karina Olson. There is a new face at Jefferson Elementary teaching first grade. Reporter Sierra Patst brings you the story. This is my second teaching job. I taught for four years in Oaks. I was the kindergarten teacher. What inspired me to become a teacher was um, growing up and just being around kids, babysitting throughout high school and college. And that kind of helped me decide to become a teacher. I went to college at Valley City State University for four years, and then I just recently graduated from the University of Jamestown with my master's. Not everyone gets to work with their mother every day. It's kind of fun to see her in the school, and she always has some helpful advice, so if I ever need anything, she can always help me with that. But I don't think it's been an issue at all. It's kind of fun to see her throughout the day. The first day of school is very chaotic, but you get to know them pretty fast when you are in the same classroom with them all day. Um, it's fun to get to see them as the years go on. This is my first year in Valley City, so I don't know any other students prior to this, but at my old school it was fun to see your kids grow up and see them in the hallway. I think it's very important to be kind and to still have fun throughout your day, but remember you're here for a reason. I think students will remember me as somebody who will always greet them in the morning with a smile and you know we like to have fun but we're still going to get our work done and remember what our jobs are throughout the day. Reporting for Highliner News, this is Sierra Paps. All are welcome to participate in one of the community's new weekly activities. Reporter Gabriel Herzog brings you the story. I wanted to start the community band because I saw that in the community there's a lot of things going on during the school year that people can be involved in for um, performance, but there's really nothing going on during the summer. And so my plan is to continue the community band through the summer to give high school students the opportunity to have something to perform in, as well as um, other people in the community. And I also wanted high school students, since I am a, a teacher at Maple Valley Public Schools, I wanted high school students to see that music is something that can be a lifelong pursuit. So a lot of the members that we have in our community band are people who have long since finished high school or college and they're just looking for another chance to perform and, and to play their instruments again. And so this community band gives them that opportunity. We rehearse on Thursday evenings at 6.30 in the band room at the Center for the Arts at VCSU. To join the community band, you can either send an email to myself at valleycitycommunityband at gmail.com and just let me know that you're interested, or you can send an email to Nick Lee at administrator at bridgesarts.org. Same thing, just letting them know that you're interested. Or you can just show up on Thursday night at 6.30, and um, if you have an instrument, make sure that you bring it with. If you don't, we can try to find you an instrument to play, and we'll get you music and get you ready to go. Reporting for Highlander News, this is Gabriel Herzog. Mr. Rourke has decided to retire from coaching. Reporter Coy Griebel brings you his story. Well, the favorite part is two parts. Uh, obviously, to coach a, a sport, you have to enjoy the sport itself. And so I really enjoyed the sport as a, as a participant when I was a kid. Loved the camaraderie. I loved the training of all the stuff that went into it. But I loved the X's and O's part of it, the strategy. But for me, it was about the camaraderie. And that was the way it was for as a coach, too. I enjoyed being around young people and the coaches and just the idea of being on a journey together. Um, just enjoyed that whole aspect. I'm going to certainly miss the people that I've uh, had a chance to, to work with over the years and I've been very fortunate and blessed to work with a lot of good coaches and administrators and players especially. Um, I, I can't thank my players enough for the work that they put in because I know it's a sacrifice. Any of you that have played a sport or done anything where you have a goal in mind, there's some sacrifice. Probably miss some of the Friday night stuff because it's always an interesting atmosphere but I'm looking forward to what uh, life has for me as I step, step aside. But I know one of the things that really um, 
caught my attention was the amount of time I spent away from my family, you know, and, and I've t told some people this, you know, I, I basically vanished from my family and my wife and my marriage sometimes for three months because of the sport. And so I'm looking forward to reconnecting with my family and my wife and, and uh, you know, seeing what else I can do to help around here and there. But um, football program will be in good hands. I trust the administration, everybody to hire a good quality coach. and. Um, I'm just excited to have the opportunity and feel very privileged to have had a chance to work with the kids as many years as I have. Mr. Rourke ended his high school football career in 1985 and ended his coaching career 37 years later and after 33 years of coaching on the same field against the same team, Fargo North. He was a two-time EDC and a two-time State Coach of the Year. Thank you, Coach Rourke, for your many years and dedication to Highliner football and the impact you have made on so many lives. From Highliner News, this is Coy Griebel. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Highliner News. I'm Gabe. And I'm Teddy.